This week on 10 Things to Know About, we're looking at vaccines. Jonathan reveals why the HPV vaccine isn't just for girls. Evine checks out the latest in vaccine development. But first, I'm looking into the fascinating history of these life-saving miracles. The world before vaccines was a very scary place. For centuries, terrifying infectious diseases like polio and smallpox were responsible for the severe illness, disability, paralysis and death of thousands of people every year. It's no exaggeration to say that vaccines are true miracles of modern medicine. Highly effective and affordable, they prevent sickness from infectious diseases and are estimated to save two and a half million lives every year. There are many historical references to the concept of vaccinating against disease, but since the first vaccine was successfully developed in 1796, they've increased life expectancy and become an essential part of modern healthcare. Ida Milne is a disease historian in Carlow College. Ida, going back in history, where do vaccines come from? The first place that the idea of immunisation comes to be mentioned is in ancient Greece, where they come across the idea that catching one disease can prevent you catching it again. But then in about the 1500s, you see the idea of inoculation coming in in China. And in the 1600s, one of the Chinese emperors, uh, who'd caught smallpox as a child himself, had his own children uh, inoculated with scabs from the disease. So they were way ahead of their time in one regard, but nowadays, how do vaccines work? Vaccines work by introducing a small amount of the disease into the body, uh, generally in in either weakened form or a a dead form, uh, to put it very simply. And that then the uh, body recognises the disease and starts to create antibodies. So when the disease comes along again, the body recognises it and and says, no, no, we've had that before. So it's kind of a little bit of an exercise training regime. I've done this, I've done this, I recognise it, and I'm going to attack it. Absolutely. Before an effective flu vaccine was developed in the 1930s and 40s, the deadly 1918 influenza pandemic infected 500 million people throughout the world and killed upwards of 50 million. The Spanish flu, as it became known, may have been the deadliest outbreak in recent times, but early 20th century Ireland was rife with other deadly infections. Some families that have come across might have lost nine or ten children to infectious diseases. Oh my so God. Way beyond our imagining as 21st century parents. Things like TB, pneumonias, bronchitis was a massive killer right up until I think the 1980s. But also from the diseases which we have so many vaccines now to prevent, they would die from scarlet fever and diphtheria, measles. Do you think we've become a little bit forgetful or complacent about how far we've come? Absolutely. People get the idea that the disease is um, less dangerous than the vaccine uh, that is um, designed to prevent it. The WHO have said that the slower uptake of vaccines is actually a global health concern nowadays. Yes, it's it's one of the 10 biggest threats they consider to global health alongside climate change and the possibility of another major flu pandemic. Measles is is making a big comeback. You see, for example, in the Ukraine, I think there was 54,000 cases in the last year. It's a massive, massive problem. That's unbelievable. In 2018? Yeah, Yeah. And how does Ireland compare to that? In Ireland, the uptake is far higher, but we have seen in in 2018, 2019, that there have been um, about 70 or 80 cases each year. And um, the number is a little lower this year, so perhaps there is, is some improvement. In 1998, a renowned medical journal published a study that would go on to become one of the most infamous and damaging in medical history. The study suggested a link between the MMR vaccine and autism. And though the research was later found to be fraudulent, the paper retracted, and the lead author stripped of his medical license, it effectively kick-started a global swell of vaccine scepticism. The issue is that it's very hard to reassure people that this is not big pharma 
trying to influence research and trying to persuade people to keep taking their vaccines. What would you say to somebody who is questioning the efficacy of vaccines? Well, I'd say do your research carefully. Talk to your vaccination nurse. Talk to your GP. They have vast experience of these diseases. But also talk maybe too to people like your mother or your grandmother and ask them about these diseases, what kind of damage they did in the past. Because your family will have uh, memories of that. I know mine do. When you look at the statistics and what happened, knowing the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of children who died or who suffered ongoing damage, why wouldn't we want to prevent that?